Hi guys and ghouls. So today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make some lovely bat wings for your shoes. If you want to see this tutorial, keep on watching. Thanks. So guys, this is going to be a pretty simple project. I'm not really great at drawing, so this is my crude pattern of the bat wing, as you can see. I have not cut it out yet, but one tip when doing the pattern, make sure that you have the shoe that you are going to use itself and trace over the holes for the lacing. Um, one trick I did was I kind of put the shoe up to the light with the paper on it and traced around the holes and I could see like the light through the holes. For the fabric, I actually found this fabric at Joann's. It is a fake leather. Even though my boots are real leather, this actually seemed to match the color and I wore the boots to the store and kind of held them up to the boots. This, um, again, was from Joann's. It's their cosplay line. And it is really great because before they had that line, I could not find any fake leathers or real leathers. This is stretchy a little bit, not overly stretchy though. Um, and it was fairly inexpensive for the amount I got. You will only need a fourth of a yard, which I will have plenty enough. I probably will be able to make a few pairs if I wanted to with this fabric or use it for some other projects. And then you will need some interfacing. Uh, this is stiff interfacing. Uh, find the stiffest interfacing that you can find at Joann's. If you need help, there's no um, hurting asking for help when finding interfacing. It is fairly inexpensive. The fabric and the interfacing with a coupon, um, make sure you get only like a fourth of a yard was less than four dollars so this is a very inexpensive uh, project as long as you already have your thread and your um, needle now you can use grommets for around the holes if you are more experienced with grommets and stuff however my grommets and my shoes i believe are black and I only have silver grommets, so I'm just going to sew around the holes, and I will show you how to do that. Now, this this interfacing, like most other interfacings, is an iron-on interfacing. Do not iron your fabric. Um, I don't think that it's a good idea, especially if you are using fake leather. Fake leather is uh, not meant to get hot like that, and you probably will end up with melted fabric. So keep that in mind. Okay, to get your project started, of course, do the do your um, cut out your uh, pattern, and then you're going to, of course, want to um, cut a front and back uh, for each side and of course you know make ones that are alternate sides so you know you don't have to draw another wing you're going to flip it over and use it for the opposite side and you're only going to need one piece of interfacing that's going to sandwich between the pieces of fabric to make it stiff so we're going I'm going to do that and show you that. I forgot to mention when doing a project like this, you want to add seam allowance when you either cut out your pattern or cut out your fabric. That way 
you don't end up with something that is smaller than you originally planned because of sewing seams. Now, if you're going to try to do this with a sewing machine, I suggest you add more seam allowance, but if you're sewing it by hand, like I'm going to do because this is a small project and I enjoy sewing by hand um, and I, I feel like I can get better details with sewing by hand sometimes. So um, you're going to at least add like a fourth of an inch all the way around. You can do this with using a ruler um, or you can just do this when putting the pattern piece down on the fabric. You can kind of trace the pattern piece onto your the back of your fabric. That way the, the back is kind of matte um, because this is fake leather. Um, you can just trace around and then when you cut it out you can add the seam allowance. So here we have the pattern pieces cut out and you can tell that that is larger than the pattern piece was. Um, the hardest part of this project is probably cutting out the pattern pieces and the fabric will want to curl a little bit. Um, I did figure out when cutting out this fabric that it is two-way stretch. So it stretches one way but doesn't stretch the other. But that isn't a big deal. So you're going to want to pin your fabric pieces together. You take the right sides, so this is what would be facing outwards, put them together and then take your inner facing piece and put it there. So you're going to pin it all together around and then when you're done, um, and make sure your inner facing is slightly smaller, as you can tell, than um, the fabric. Anyways, um, and then when you flip it right side uh, out after you're done sewing it, that will be facing the inside. Okay, guys, so... Um, you can see here how I did a really simple stitch around the whole uh, wing and that kind of shows you a little easier because that's the um, inner facing that's inside. So what you're going to do is you take your scissors and Cut off this long part that is not stitched on, obviously, because of seam allowance. And very carefully cut some little tiny slits. Little tiny slits. Around some of the curved areas. and the tips that you have here. You don't have to have bunches. This doesn't have to be exact, but it will kind of help give it its shape. Again, um, if you sewed close to the edge like I did just be be very careful when cutting your little slits definitely like around the points and stuff you are going to want to do this and sorry my child is in the other room and I'm trying to get her to take a nap. So if you hear 
weird noises and singing. That is her. Okay. So we did that. And you can see here I didn't sew um, to the edge. You can. I don't think it'll really affect this. But I did that for the seam. Now you're going to take the two sides that are sewn together and open them. But turn this inside out. So that it is right side out, if that makes any sense. You're going to want to poke your finger in there. Um, and you can get something that is kind of pokey, but not too sharp to get this out the right way. With this last part right here, that is really pointy. What I did is I took m my scissors because, you know, when they're closed, they're not sharp. They're not going to hurt anything. I just gently started pushing in on that. Gently. Sorry if I went off camera. As you can tell, it is a lot more pointed. And uh, that'll help give it the shape. Okay, so some of these points, if you have difficulty getting them to stay out, just slowly work with it. This is some, this is a project that is like really super easy. Sorry, I keep going off camera, I apologize. And you can do this slowly, like you don't have to be in a rush about it. Okay, so now the, as you can see, the wing is the right side out, kind of flatten it. If, you're getting a weird uh, fold in it. So this one is going to go this way. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to fold this little piece over. Since this is your opening, fold that little piece over in it. So that it's starting to give you like a seam there. Then you're going to take the other side that is not included with the interfacing. This is the easiest way to pin it to explain to you guys. Fold it bring it to the other side like this fold that seam fold this seam bring it to the other and you just want to pin this closed okay very simple Now pinning this closed can't and working with this fabric can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. However, it is cheap and your end result will be worth it. I find making small projects like this a little bit more difficult. So maybe it's my chubby fingers, I don't know. So I 
as you can see, poking it in the fabric. Um, and make sure that you're pinning this to, like in the area you're going to be sewing in because if you do not, it will leave little holes in the fabric. So you're also, as you do that, you're going to want to pin places that you are gonna sew. That way these points stay outwards and stay pointed. So you know that you're gonna have a seam around here. So take that pin, put it there. There you go. And then it's nice to put one over here where this point is going to be. Um, I guess I can put one right here. there's going to be stitches there so this is what kind of what your uh, wings going to look like now I went ahead and did the other one make sure that you uh, stitch them opposite sides, but I did this all by hand. Um, as you can see, let the camera focus, it is very simply stitched. Um, if a stitch here and there are a little bit of alignment, it is fine. Um, the back of it looks very similar, but you can see some spots where I had ended a thread and stuff. You can trim those little tails later on. So what we are going to do is we are going to take, put our pattern piece over the wing And you can take an awl if you have one, or I have this, it's a grommet setter, but it punches holes. So I'm going to use the grommet setter to make these holes. Okay, very simply, as you can tell, it punched these holes. If you have one of these, um, I suggest you go through and kind of trim a little bit. Okay, and as you can tell, there are three holes there. Um, I may have to cut the holes slightly larger, but, um, after doing this, I'm just going to do a simple whip stitch around the holes, kind of like a buttonhole, but by hand. And you definitely can do this by hand. Um, you can do buttonholes by hand, hand too. I do that because I don't have a uh, button foot for my sewing machine. So, um, it's actually really simple and easy. Um, if you don't know what a whip stitch is, you just simply insert the needle. 
um, put it through the hole instead of, you know, doing a regular thing, you whip it around. I wanted to make sure that no one was confused about the whip stitch part of this tutorial. So I know that these aren't really that evenly spaced, but I think it'll work out. Anyways, uh, what you want to do is take your needle, poke it through the hole, then bring it back through the hole and back into the fabric like this. You're just sort of whipping it around, hence the name whip stitch. So I will show you that again a couple more times. Whip it through the hole. Bring it through the fabric like this. And it just simply goes around the hole. You are not doing anything fancy. This is just to keep the fabric together and kind of allow the laces to go through without having a grommet. So again, simply bringing it through fabric through the hole. If you wanted to do it a more difficult way, drop the thread through there, then bring it through the back of the fabric. And you're going to go all the way around the hole until you're finished. Um, you can go over spots if you want to, but uh, you think you need more thread, but that's basically what you do. So this is the end product, as you kind of seen in the beginning. They are not perfectly symmetrical, but they are pretty close. Now, if you wanted to put these on different shoes or make them with a different fabric for like canvas sneakers or something like that, you are more than welcome to. Whatever you want to do is basically the limit. Um, um, you could also, if you wanted to, outline them in a different color thread, that's a cool idea. Or something similar, maybe like metallic thread or whatever. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I greatly appreciate everyone that watches my videos and has subscribed to me. And uh, it, it does really mean a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye.